This is the location of the different tracks, descending and ascending tracks shown in the diagram. Descending tracks are almost uh, that arises from the posterior horn, and these are the the two tracts, one is the anterior spinothalamic present in anterior funiculus or spinal cord as I told you anterior funiculus between two ventral roots white matter between two ventral roots these are the ventral roots this one is the ventral root this hole is the this one is the anterior funiculus this is the anterior spinothalamic tract and in the lateral funiculus is the lateral spinothalamic tract is present it is laterally related to anterior spinal cerebellar tract as well as posterior spinal cerebellar tract partially this is the location of lateral carti spinothalamic it carry temperature pain sensation this tract Second tract group is this is the fasciculus gracilis in posterior funiculus. Similarly, this is the fasciculus gracilis over here of the left side, and this is on right side. Fasciculus gracilis, this is the fasciculus cuneatus, this is the fasciculus cuneatus. They carry the touch, pressure, vibration, impulses from lamina three and four. Spinothalamic both arise from lamina 1 and 2 and from this apex of gray matter here is the head from which 3 and 4 it give a region of this fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus. There is a third variety which is the on the most lateral side of the lateral funiculus. Lateral funiculus I told you between ventral and dorsal root this white matter. Uh, there are two tracts on the most uh, uh, extreme uh, side of the lateral funiculus, anterior spinal cerebellar tract, posterior spinal cerebellar tract, which carry the the proprioceptive impulses to cerebellum. So three groups, groups of the general sensation. First group is temperature pain. Second group, touch pressure vibration. Third group is the proprioceptive. So, the first group, which is from lamina 1 and 2, spinothalamic carry. 3 and 4 by the fascicular gracilis cuneatus. And 5 and 6 give a region of anterior spino cerebellar tract and posterior spinal cerebellar tract. So three, six tracts, two carry temperature pain, two carry proprioceptive, two carry touch pressure vibration, six ascending tracts located over here. The similarly descending tracts which are the uh, lateral corticospinal rises from the cortex and on the anterior horn then second is the anterior corticospinal there are two actually corticospinal tract cross those which cross enter into lateral funiculus as lateral corticospinal those which does not cross enter in anterior funiculus as anterior corticospinal they are descending tract terminate on the lamina this is the lamina 8 this is 9 this is the uh, base of the anterior horn this is the head of the anterior horn second descending tract is vestibular spinal this is the vestibular spinal tract arises from the vestibular nuclei and this tract is so skilled movement dependent on the corticospinal. The overextension and flexion 
that is controlled by cerebellum these two tracts under control of cerebellum as well as cerebral cortex the vestibular spinal tract because it is very important that if the flexion at the knee uh, elbow joint or knee joint occurring extension should be inhibited or when extension is going on flexion should be inhibited so two tracts are there this vestibular spinal allow or facilitate the extension but as well as inhibit the flexors actually it releases two neurotransmitters one causes facilitation of the extensor muscles and other inhibitory hormone inhibit the flexors so in this way the flexion extension is going on second tract is rubrospinal right from the red nucleus of the midbrain to the anterior horn this is concerned with flexion activity flexors are facilitated extensors are inhibited it also produces two neurotransmitters one which facilitate the flexion other fibers produce inhibitory hormone to extend cells so in this by their coordination the flexion extension is going on corticospinal provide the rapid skilled movement to these flexion and extension movements it is just governing flexion extension is not control lateral corticospinal as a whole assist in flexion uh, in flexion activity but the also the rapid skilled movements under control of the lateral corticospinal tract so there are two three important tracts descending vestibular spinal for extensors rubrospinal spinal for flexors corticospinal also assist flexor but rapid skilled movements so this is a section which is a Uh, showing the exact localization of the these tracts it is the posterior horn lateral to that there is two tracts lateral corticospinal and rubrospinal in the anterior funiculus there is anterior corticospinal as well as vestibular spinal and sensory is the anterior spinothalamic in lateral funiculus lateral corticospinothalamic anterior spinal cerebellar and posterior spinal cerebellar there is a pathway is shown that from the skin which uh, receptors are touch pressure vibration pain they follow the dendrites of the dorsal root ganglia to pass on to the ganglia the neurons of the dorsal root ganglia from their axon arise and which carry the message to the anterior horn directly and from the anterior horn message is conveyed by the ventral root to the muscle and this is for known as the spinal arc for quick action that if there is a pen prick say on the skin this pathway is next is the touch vibratory sense and conscious muscle joint sense which mean touch pressure and vibration tract posterior white column two tracts as shown green in the diagram in the posterior funiculus vesicular gracilis medially vesicular cuneatus laterally axon enter the spinal cord from posterior root ganglia these fiber and by synapsing with the cells in the posterior gray horn lamina 3 and 4 head of the posterior horn next order fiber arise as fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cuneatus fasciculus gracilis is present throughout the 
length of the spinal cord from all segments of the spinal cord these fibers and gypsy lateral are same side not cross and terminate on second order neuron in nucleus gracilis as shown over here this is the fascicle gracilis that approaches to the medulla that end into nucleus gracilis nucleus cuneatus and fasciculus gracilis terminate in nucleus gracilis these fibers and ipsilateral same side terminate on the second order neuron nucleus gracilis present in medulla fasciculus cuneatus is present in upper thoracic and cervical segments so difference between the two is the fasciculus gracilis present throughout the length of spinal cord take fiber whereas fasciculus cuneatus is smaller it start at the upper thoracic and cervical segment of spinal cord both take fiber from lamina 3 and 4 ascend in the posterior column of the spinal cord as fasciculus cuneatus to terminate in nucleus cuneatus next order fiber rise from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus as internal arcuate fibers as shown that this is the right side group of fasciculus nucleus gracilis cuneatus this is the left side group nucleus gracilis and cuneatus fiber arise as internal arcuate fiber next order then they these fiber they cross after crossing they ascend as bundle up like this up name is given medial laminiscus the fiber which arise from gracilis and cuneate they form an arc like structure and because they are present inside the medulla so name is given internal arcuate which mean arc like fiber inside medulla then they cross after crossing left side fiber ascend upward right side fiber ascend upward towards the right opposite side has medial laminiscus so cervical segment of spinal cord ascend in the posterior column of spinal cord fasciculus cuneatus to terminate in cuneatus next order fiber rise from nucleus gracilis cuneatus as the internal arcuate fibers which decussate or cross with each other to ascend as medial laminiscus in medulla and end into bpl nucleus thalamus the final termination thalamus next pair of tract which carry the proprioceptive impulses is muscle joint pathway to cerebellum two tracts are there posterior and anterior spinothalamic cerebellar posterior spinocerebellar axon enter the spinal cord and from the posterior root ganglia enter the posterior gray column lamina 5 and 6 and also called tarsa nucleus of clark the lamina 6 with uh, collection of neuron name is given tarsal nucleus of clark axon of the second order axon uh, neurons form the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord ascend in the lateral funiculus of spinal cord on the same side not cross name is posterior spinocerebellar tract it enter the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle and terminate in the cerebellar cortex this tract receive muscle joint information from muscle spindles tendons organs and joint receptors of the trunk and lower limb so this information is used by the cerebellum in coordination of the limb movements 
and maintenance of the posture so as i told you the rubrospinal and this the vestibular spinal descending pads and the control of cerebellum so for their coordination flexion extension this information is important conveyed by posterior spinal cerebellar tract anterior spinal cerebellar tract tracks on entering the spinal cord from the posterior root ganglia terminate in lamina 6 and dorsal nucleus clark these fiber cross ascend as anterior spinal thoracic tract fiber enter the medulla then bounds and enter the cerebellum through superior cerebellar peduncle and terminate cerebellar cortex it convey muscle joint information from the muscle spindle tendon organ and joint receptors of the trunk and upper and lower limb descending tracts of the spinal cord descending tracts rise as axons of the brain nuclei neurons nuclei present in the brain they are axon they pass down to spinal cord as descending tract and terminate on various lamina of the gray matter these tracts are motor tracts anterior horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord is also a motor the nuclei and the cerebral cortex of the brain are called upper motor neurons the nuclei and the cere that is the cerebral cortex of the brain are called upper motor neuron and the horn of the spinal cord is lower motor neuron which give ventral root or motor fibers to skeletal muscle first tract is cortico spinal it fiber arise as axons of the pyramidal cells of cerebral cortex fiber arise from the primary motor area 4 secondary motor area 6 and also the parietal lobe area 3 1 and 2 sensory areas this is the site of origin of the cortico spinal fibers of the cortico spinal tract pass through the internal capsule then cross cerebri of midbrain then basilar part of pon then from the pyramids of the medulla so called pyramidal tract in the lower medulla 75 to 90% fiber cross 10 to 25% fiber uncrossed which also cross but at different segments of the spinal cord cross fiber enter the lateral funiculus of spinal cord and uncross fibers enter anterior funiculus of spinal cord cross fibers called lateral cortico spinal tract uncross fibers anterior cortico spinal tract lateral cortico spinal tract terminate on lamina 7 8 and 9 of the anterior horn of the spinal cord in whole length of the spinal cord whereas the anterior cortico spinal tract terminate into cervical and upper thoracic regions this tract is used in performing rapid skilled movements next descending tract is rubro spinal rubro mean red red nucleus of the uh, which is present in midbrain this tract arises from that due to red name is given rubro and into spinal cord fiber of this tract arise from the nerve cells 
in the superior colliculus of the midbrain from red nucleus. Axons of the neuron in this nucleus cross midline. It is a cross tract. Many times MCQ was where they crossed and crossed this tract and descend as the rubrospinal tract through the pons medulla enter the lateral funiculus of spinal cord to terminate on lamina 7 and 8 of the anterior gray column. Red nucleus also see fibers from the cerebral cortex, corticorubral fibers, and from the cerebellum as dentatorubral fibers. So red nucleus connected with the cerebral cortex through corticorubral and cerebellum give fibers dentatorubral. So this nucleus is under control of cerebral cortex but mainly under control of cerebellum. So cerebral cortex, cerebellum cortex influence its activity. This tract facilitate activity of the flexor muscles and inhibit the activity of extensor muscles by the production of the two type of neurotransmitters. The axons uh, that produce facilitate the extensors inhibit the flexors. Uh, facilitate the flexors and inhibit the extensors. Vestibular spinal tract. Vestibular nuclei present at the junction of pond and medulla. This nucleus receives fiber from inner ear that is vestibular nerve, eighth nerve, also from the cerebellum. It is mainly under control of cerebellum. Neurons of the lateral vestibular nucleus give rise axon that form vestibular spinal tract. It is uncrossed, pass through the medulla and enter the anterior funiculus of spinal cord. Its fiber terminate on lamina 7 and 8 of the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord. This tract facilitate activity of the extensor muscles and inhibit the activity of the flexor muscles in association with maintenance of balance. This also maintain the balance. Fourth variety is autonomic tract arises from the neurons of the autonomic nuclei of the hypothalamus and descend in the lateral column of the spinal cord and terminate on the lateral horn of spinal cord. Spinal arc is the involuntary response to, a, to the stimulus. It consists of receptors which are present in skin and afferent neurons in the posterior root ganglia and efferent neuron anterior horn and efferent organ that is the muscle. 